welcome to my astrology channel. My name is Martine and if you are new here, I do videos on uh, Vedic astrology mainly but also with some tropical insights and I focus on both natal and relationship astrology. And if you like this video and you would like to see more content from me, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And also if you would like to uh, make a donation to the channel or if you are interested in a personal consultation, I do uh, consultations on a variety of subjects, please check out the video description. I will leave the information there. So thank you. And uh, today's topic is going to be a continuation of a video that I made uh, probably about a couple of months ago. And namely it is about the moon Venus aspects in Sinistry interchart comparisons. So meaning comparisons between two individual charts of two individual people in a relationship. So the moon Venus um, aspects, why are they are important. So the first part that I made is about the ne the positive aspects to be found in Sinistry, namely the conjunction, the trine, the sextile. And this part, the continuation, is going to be about the negative aspects between Moon and Venus. So the square opposition and the quincunx aspect. Um, so First of all, let me start by describing what moon signifies in the natal chart. I also made a description in that other video, you can check that out as well, but I am going to repeat it again because I think it's important to have it all in one video. So what is the moon representing with regards to a person's psyche, uh, with regards to a person's archetype in their natal chart? and why it is important in a relationship. So the moon represents the emotional needs of a person. It represents the basic temperament. In Vedic astrology, the moon is actually the single most important uh, placement to look at to determine a person's overall personality and what they're gonna be like. It represents the way that a person thinks. So basic temperament, like I said, basic personality, their mind, and their emotions, of course. So it's the basic temperament, basically. So Mercury rules ideas, but the moon rules the mind in Vedic astrology. And uh, it also, of course, shows the way that a person overall thinks. So the way they think, not the thoughts themselves, uh, or their ability to communicate, which is shown by uh, Mercury. Actually, it does also give some insights into the way they communicate. <clears throat> but not as much as Mercury. So Mercury is about rational mind, rational communication, and abstract thinking, and analytical thinking. So the moon is your basic MO, like modus operandi. Um, right, and what your emotional needs are, which is the most important thing, because these are the parts that have to be fulfilled in a romantic relationship, right? Um, and it also represents the mother, of course, and the early childhood environment and all these things. Um, but these are less important when you look at this particular aspect. And now Venus, what does Venus stand for? Venus stands for um, the way you express your feelings, your romantic feelings uh, particularly, so it has to do with the um, seductive side of a person. Uh, it's especially relevant for uh, women when it comes to the way that they they try to attract a partner and it's relevant for a man to see how, what kind of a partner they, they will be attracted to. Uh, Venus is also one of the so-called wife signifiers in a man's chart. Um, so it also shows in everything that you enjoy in life, everything to do with hedonism and pleasure and how you take pleasure, what you take pleasure in, your hobbies, your interests, your aesthetic ideals. Um, you know, it shows what kind of music you like, what kind of movies you like, what kind of food you like, all of these things. So everything that gives you pleasure through the five senses is something that is going to be shown by Venus. But most importantly, it shows your value system, what you place your value on. Um, and obviously this is going to be very important in a relationship, as well as the fact that the Venus shows how you love, how you receive love and how you give love. So it rules romantic love, basically. And um, how you want to be loved, right? Okay, so this was the general description. So now to get straight into what each aspect stands for. First of all, I'm going to start with the general description. Again, I think I described this in the other video, but I think it's important to, in order to really understand how these aspects function. I'm going to explain it again. Um, 
<laughs> I probably should just make a video on basic introductory astrology and explain the whole aspects in general thing, but that's a parenthesis. Yeah, if you're interested in that, please leave a comment in the comment section. Um, but I'm just going to explain it right now. So, first of all, the square. So, Moon, Square, Venus. Um, <clears throat> so, in order to understand what the square means, first of all, let me make a short parenthesis by saying these aspects, the square and the quincunx, are not even taken into account into traditional Vedic astrology. But because I have started studying astrology through the tropical perspective, I definitely have seen that, you know, they do hold relevance in plenty of areas, but especially in chart inter aspects and in the composite. So when when you're looking at synastry, I think they are very relevant to look at. So, but I'm not going to look at them the way that you look at them in tropical astrology, because I know in tropical astrology, everything is about the orb. I'm not really going to be looking so much at the orb. Obviously, the tighter the orb is, the more intensely you will feel this aspect. But I'm going to be looking at it with respect, of, with respect to the overall energy. So if, these ener if the signs that these planets fall into will form a square or a quincunx or an opposition, then I will look at it as, as that. Uh, for example, so uh, if Moon is in Aries, no matter what degree, and Venus is in uh, Virgo in the other person's chart, no matter what degree, I'm going to look at that as a quincunx inter aspect. Even though, of course, if it is within 10 degrees or less of orb difference, it's going to be that much more intense. Um, so yeah, the general description, okay? So first what you need to understand is modality, elements, and polarity. This is basically the basic of the zodiac. So each sign, so forget for a second that you know the definition of each sign. Forget about Aries, Taurus, and all these things. This is all about energy. So um, the fire signs, so the fire element, each of these elements, the four elements are fire, uh, earth, air, and water. So each of these, they take on three different modalities, right? Cardinal, fixed, and mutable. And... And uh, the signs also divide into two different polarities, masculine and feminine. So masculine means extroverted, outwardly focused, um, you know, confident, direct, etc. Feminine means introverted, inwardly focused, more shy, etc. Um, and the way that the zodiac goes is it's one sign masculine, the, other, the next one is feminine, the next is masculine, the next is feminine, until the end. Uh, and it starts with cardinal fire, which is Aries, and then you have fixed earth, which is Taurus, and then you have um, mutable air, which is Gemini, and then again you have cardinal water, which is Cancer, and so on and so forth. So this is important to understand when you're looking at these aspects, because uh, when you're looking at a square, you're looking at two signs that have the same modality, and they have the same polarity, but they have different elements. So, for instance, Aries is square with Cancer. Aries is cardinal fire. Cancer is cardinal water. Um, sorry, no, they don't have the same. Uh, they don't have the same polarity. Um, so they have. So Aries is masculine. Cancer is feminine. So can basically when you're looking at a square, you're looking at two signs that have the same basic modality in common, right? So they're both either cardinal or fixed. Or mutable and they are not the sign of opposition the sign which is of opposition is also going to be the same polarity so this is why the opposition is the lesser of all the difficult aspects because you have the most in common with the other sign so you have Aries is opposite Libra they're both masculine um, one of them is fire the other is is air and they're both cardinal Queen Kungs is the alien dynamic, meaning you don't have anything in common with this other entity. So Aries, so the Quincunx is a, I think it's called an 100 and, yeah, it's a 150 degree aspect. Um, and it's the signs that uh, fall, fra, fall on uh, uh, either side of the opposite sign. So to break it down in an example, if, yeah, again, for Aries, so the opposite sign is Libra, so the signs that are one before Libra and one after Libra is a quincunx sign. So Virgo and uh, 
Scorpio. These are two signs that Aries has nothing in common with. They don't have the same polarity, they don't have the same modality, and they don't have the same element. So this is complete alien interaction. This is why the Quinkungs is actually said to be, in many ways, very, very difficult. It's literally the the absence, almost, of an aspect, because they can't even, they don't even have enough in common to argue, if that makes sense. Uh, right, and so the, oppo the opposition is the least difficult of the difficult placements in general. Um, so the actual description, so what does Moon Square Venus mean? It means that um, you know, the part of a, of a person represented by the moon is going to be in conflict with the Venus placement of the other person. So like I said, the difference between the, the square signs is that they have different elements. So the way, the very basic nature of this energy is different. So they might go about it in different, in, uh, not, not in different, they might go about it in, uh, in a similar direction. So like cardinal energy, for instance, is very uh, direct in energy. So they might, if you have Aries and uh, Cancer, they're both going to be proactive energies, for instance, and they're going to enjoy being in motion, but one of them is going to do it in a quiet, introverted way, uh, the Cancer sign, you know, and they're going to do it more using, you know, emotions and intuition and creativity, and they're going to have different priorities and all this stuff, whereas Aries is going to be all about me, 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 and they're going to be very extroverted, very aggressive, very direct. They're not going to be, you know, stopping by to see how many people they have walked over in pursuit of their goals. And so when the moon is square Venus, it basically shows a conflict between moon between you know your a person's basic emotional needs and the other person's value system, um, and this is the most basic description. So it is a pretty difficult aspect, but it's not catastrophic. I would not call this a deal breaker. However, this is kind of an aspect that can um, can really start to irritate a couple after a certain period of time. So this is the kind of, like, this is a subtle energy because both the Moon and Venus are feminine planets. So this is not going to be the kind of energy where you point blank, uh, you know, within the first few months of interacting with a person, you know that this person is annoying you. Uh, it will probably take a few months or years or God knows how long before you start to realize that, okay, I am annoyed by this person, you know, we don't have the same values, or like, I am annoyed by the fact that they're constantly taking me for granted, because this is another thing that I see a lot with this aspect, is that it's usually the Venus person, but not just, but usually the Venus person starts to take the moon person for granted, uh, because the moon person is going to be very um, receptive and very emotional and very nurturing because the moon is also the mother archetype and the Venus is going to be like kind of like a spoiled child um, you know so the, the moon person is nurturing but the way that they nurture the Venus person is not fully appreciated or like is different than the way that the Venus person wants to receive affection so usually it can translate into the Venus person feeling smothered um, or just feeling that the moon person's need for security is getting in the way of their fun. That's another thing because the Venus is, you know, sugar spice and everything nice. So uh, it's about pursuing pleasure and hedonism and, you know, partying. Ve think of Venus as Marie Antoinette and... Uh, and the moon as uh, her mother, I think, Maria Teresa. <laughs> so, I don't know, something like that, you know. So the moon is trying to 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 be nice towards uh, Venus, but the, the Venus person doesn't really appreciate it. That's the bottom line of with this aspect. Um, again, it is not fully a deal breaker because you have to look at the whole chart. I would not call this a particularly difficult aspect to have. There are others that are really way worse. Um, at the very least, so there is a positive side to this because at the very least there is a contact between these two planets, which means that there will still be kind of a basis 
of, you know, at least these two parts of, of two people's psyches will communicate to each other. So at the very least, you will acknowledge the fact. So the Venus person will acknowledge the Moon's person emotional needs, and the Moon person will acknowledge Venus's, uh, you know, aesthetics and hedonism and love of fun and all this. At the very least, you notice each other. You make each other feel seen. Um, if you wouldn't have any aspect between Moon and Venus, or if you have the Quincunx, um, it could be that you feel like these two parts of your psyches are invisible to one another, which can lead to, I think, a more difficult interaction in the long term. Um, and now the opposition, as I have mentioned, this is one of it's the lesser, the lesser painful of these difficult aspects because you have the same polarity and you have the same um, modality, and. Basically, this is a po this is I would say relatively positive because again there can be conflicts there can be a, a um, you know push and pull sort of feeling but usually with the opposition it's an interaction where um, each person gives something and receives something in exchange on an equal measure so there won't be as much conflict of course every now and then you will reach an imbalance like you know the Venus person wants one thing the Moon person wants the other thing. Um, another thing that can happen, there are conflicts w to do with, uh, and this is with Moon, Venus, difficult aspects in general. Another thing that can happen is a conflict between how you manage your money in the relationship. Because Venus also has to do with finances and Moon has to do with security. Another inter so another uh, um, interpretation of the difficult aspects between Moon and Venus are is the the fact that the Venus person is taking too many financial risks and the Moon person doesn't appreciate it because it contradicts their sense for security. And, um, but yeah, with the, so the opposition is the less painful of all of these three. So it's, I would say it's still not a positive aspect, but it's definitely not catastrophic. And I would say it's better to have the opposition than to not have any kind of aspect between Moon and Venus, uh, because again, going in line with what I said about the square, at, le at the very least you notice each other and you, at least each of, each of you get something. There's a, a balancing quality in the other person that you benefit from. Uh, now, Moon Queen Kung's Venus is the most difficult, like I did mention, so this is literally like alien energy, like I mentioned, so usually what happens with this aspect is I mean, the Quincunx is described traditionally as a constant sense of irritation, but I would go beyond that. I would say it's more like, um, if this goes on for a long period of time, it can get to the point where you don't even know how to behave around the other person because almost anything can annoy them. Now, with this particular inter-aspect, because they're both feminine planets, the funny thing is, what can end up uh, happening is that you will end up in one of those scenarios where you stop, you, uh, I mean, you stop talking to each other because you don't know what the other person uh, is thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they would have been direct planets, like if you're talking Mars having Quinkunx, uh, the sun, you would just argue with each other, you know, and you would be like... Uh, uh, a fish arguing with a bird, you know, because you're both aliens and you're on your own plane and you can't see eye to eye no matter what. But when you have two feminine planets, what can happen is um, your feminine planets are going to go inward when you have when they have a green grievance. So, <laughs> so they're not even going to talk about what is wrong. So you can have this situation of uncomfortable silences, like in pulp, pulp fiction. Uh, where you're not talking to each other because you don't know what to say so that the other person doesn't take offense or something. Or there will be like heavy silences. Or there will be like just a feeling like there's a disapproval or that you're, you know, if you're the Venus person, you're going to feel that your affection is not being really... You might feel like you're giving affection and the other person doesn't even notice it. Uh, because the way that the moon person... Um, the, moon's per the moon person's emotional needs are going to be so different from the way that you express your feelings and everything that your, your Venus signifies that they're not even going to really acknowledge what you're doing. 
Um, and the other way around, you know, if the moon person is being quinkunst, um, it, you're going to feel like your emotional needs are not being seen by the other person, if that makes sense. Or, and there there can be one of the key words connected with the quinkunst in general is uh, misunderstanding. So that's something you need to watch out for. So my advice would be if you do have this, especially if it's a double whammy, so like if each of your moon and Venus is quinkunxing the other person's moon and Venus, um, you need to really talk. Like you need to be clear that you understand the other person and it's better to ask uh, a lot of questions and make sure that you understand things clearly rather than act on impulse or you know, draw conclusions and you might you might end up in more conflict like that rather than having an open conversation about whatever it is that bothers you in this interaction. Yeah, pretty much. So some examples of famous people I have looked for a lot of examples, but um mostly I will be honest, I just look for relationships that I knew ended. So um one example that I found is Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, who Brad Pitt has moon Venus conjunct in Sagittarius, and uh, he has both his moon and his Venus square, Angelina Jolie's moon in Pisces. Right, so this is a relationship that ended. Now, to be honest, they also had other difficult placements, so I don't think the relationship ended just because of this aspect. Um, another example was Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee, whose relationship also eventually ended, but after a long time. Um, he had Venus in Aries square her moon in, Cap in, in Capricorn. Another example, I think that's pretty much it. Or, wait. Also with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, they also had the Queen Kungs, so both their moon and their Venus are negatively aspected by the other person's moon slash Venus because she has Venus in Cancer, Queen Kung's his moon in Sagittarius so, and his Venus is square her moon in Pisces um, right another example was Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth who have so she has Venus in Sagittarius, Queen Kung's his moon in Cancer and he also has his Venus in Capricorn, sextile her moon in Scorpio. So uh, with them, it was, you know, from her Venus to his up to his moon, uh, it was a Queen Kungs. And from the other, the other way around, from his Venus to her moon, it was a relatively positive aspect. But in their case, they also have a lot of very complicated synastry. And I've actually... I actually found their synastry so interesting that I wanted to do a separate video about their synastry... So, like, please let me know if you would be interested in that. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are all the examples that I could find. I have looked for a lot of examples, but it's difficult to look for them. You know, famous couples examples that have hard aspects. But examples are not, I think, you know, this is definitely... These are definitely aspects that I've seen over and over and over again in relationships. And... This is how I have noticed that they play out. So, this is it. And, uh, yeah, thank you for listening. And once again, if you like this content and you would like to hear more uh, content from me, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell. And if you're interested in a personal consultation or you want to make a donation, please check out the video description for more information. So, thank you very much.